Hi, my name is Leo Monroe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week. And if you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And if you are new, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you are a subscriber already, please um, press the thumbs up button to like and uh, share with your fellow trading colleagues. And it gets this quality content, um, the views up on, on YouTube. And um, really the difference between uh, myself and uh, probably 95% of other YouTube weekly analysis traders is that I include fundamental analysis to the technicals, uh, Fundamentals are little understood, but they are very important and they are really the medium to long term drivers of price. So if you want to know where price is going in the future and kind of predict trends or a ranging market, you have to understand fundamental and risk sentiment analysis based on inflation, interest rates, business cycle and generally monetary policy. And then we go down into the technical analysis and use supply and demand strategies like daily supply and demand zones, capture pain relief and stop hunt strategies um, and then obviously looking at risk management trade entry and profit targets so um, this week before we get into the technicals and fundamentals we just look at the week ahead and looking at the week ahead um, the president Biden Joe Biden has passed the 1.9 trillion pandemic aid bill narrowly in the house um, on Saturday and all attention will now move to vote in the Senate. Investors will also turn their eyes to US jobs report due Friday, GDP data for Australia, Brazil, Canada and Turkey, as well as worldwide manufacturing and services PMI and monetary policy action by the Reserve Bank of Australia. So important for the, uh, for Australia um, is the monetary policy. We've got GDP for, again, for Australia, Canada, so the Canadian dollar, and um, jobs report will definitely be closely watched because if there is um, you know, employment coming into the market, then that is a good sign for GDP and economic growth. So uh, the, uh, the trillion, uh, 1.9 trillion pandemic bill passed, so that should stimulate the economy, get people spending and uh, the economy functioning. Again, and we're gonna be talking a bit more detail about the dollar as we get into the, uh, uh, the analysis. So moving on to the dollar index, and the Dow Jones dollar index, or the, uh, DXY. Um, what we have, uh, and I was saying this for the last uh, couple of weeks, matter of fact, a few weeks, is that I was probably a bit more bullish on the dollar in the short term over the next one to three months. And um, it's really because I kind of saw that the dollar um, was having some positive news around um, you know, uh, the, the, the economy and inflation. And um, I think it had really been um, sold uh, quite a lot. I do think probably overall, maybe the next uh, medium to long term uh, uh, time horizons, maybe six to 12 months, may want to um, you know, uh, uh, continue its, its downtrend. But uh, for the medium, for this walk, well, for the short term anyway, I thought that prices would start to, dollar would start to increase in strength. And really the Dow Jones dollar index, we don't necessarily trade this, it's just a measure of uh, dollar strength with regards to um, other currencies like the euro, the pound, uh, the Japanese yen, the Australian dollar. And how we use the, the, the dollar index is just to really kind of, as confluence. So if you do start to see um, a demand zone in the dollar index and prices start to tick higher, then you should want to uh, potentially get long on the, uh, the the dollar. But also as well, you have to understand why you're getting high, um, getting long on the dollar. Um, it's not necessarily driven by the technicals, it's fundamentals first. And um, in this, uh, this uh, Bloomberg article, why the dollar is more robust than it looks by Richard Cookson. And Richard Cookson uh, was the head of research and fund manager at Rubicon Fund Management. He was previously chief investment officer at Citibank and head of asset allocation research at HSBC. So he knows uh, what he's talking about. Anyone on Bloomberg will know what they're talking about. But um, in this article, he basically breaks down uh, why the dollar, he thought that the dollar also was um, a decent um, uh, uh, 
well, basically the headline being uh, the dollar looks more robust than it is. And uh, really the kind of the pick out of this uh, one of the sentences was that he thinks that the, the US will grow more quickly than the rest of the developed world this year and rate expectations thus will keep moving in the dollar's favor. So um, I had come to this conclusion um, uh, a few weeks ago, especially against the euro, not necessarily against every every other pair, but just um, I thought that the euro was a bit weak, and I'll get onto the euro when it's, um, when when I do the euro dollar. Um, but um, just uh, some more articles as well after the Federal Reserve. Jerome Powell spent two days telling lawmakers the economy is in no state to be thinking about monetary tightening. Financial markets suddenly started pricing in a rapid and perhaps too hot recovery. So that's really what's happening. The, the, the market, the bond market um, <clears throat> is pricing in uh, potential you know, inflation and recovery. And so you're seeing the dollar start to uh, strengthen, especially when you compare it against other um, certain other uh, countries and currencies and where they are. So um, positive sentiment at the moment, you know, by the rumor at the moment, the rumor has started, whether this rumor will continue, you know, and has legs, nobody really knows. But while it does, you know, it's by the rumor, so the fact it's not necessarily the fact that, um, you know, the dollar will exactly be the the number one, um, you know, country and currency in the world and really kind of strengthen and, and grow. That's that's not neither here nor there. But the fact that the market has to price that in or is pricing that in at the moment, then that is where the money is made. So um, the rumor has started. And also another um, really interesting article from Bloomberg was that um, traders map out day when central banks finally raise rates. Raising rates is, um, you know, tends to strengthen uh, a currency. And uh, so after standing shoulder to shoulder with, with much of the pandemic, traders are preparing for the day the world's central banks begin to move apart in policy. So policy divergences is what we're looking for. Um, and these are really good trades is um, interest rate divergences and uh, monetary policy divergences. So just quickly, this um, this uh, paragraph. So through, though little movement is expected for at least the next year, futures markets suggest the Federal Reserve will hike rates in late 2023 and the Reserve Bank of Australia in 2024. New Zealand looks ahead of the pack with a hike priced in for late 2022. In Europe and the UK, the likelihood of additional cuts is still being debated while in Japan, a further move lower remains stubbornly priced in. So you can start to see the um, uh, the, the divergences in hiking, holding and cutting rates. So again, you're seeing the dollar start to strengthen as you know the rumor starts to take hold, whether um, the Federal Reserve will do it you know, or not is again, um, uh, something different, but the rumor has now started and the dollar's probably looking quite cheap at the moment. So any pullbacks, technically, if you get it, um, when it comes to uh, uh, confluences on uh, the, the dollar index, that's where you know you want to be looking for potential buy trades. If it does pull back, if you're looking at still selling the dollar and trying to take advantage of anything technically, I would probably say anything around here would be the best area to look for some sell trades uh, for the dollar. But again, technical analysis does not stand in the way of fundamental analysis. There's no technical supply zone level. If this is seen as cheap for the dollar fundamentally and risk sentiment wise, there is no level of supply or resistance or Elliott wave or any kind of Bollinger Band that's gonna stand in the way of what the fundamentals are saying. It just doesn't make any sense you know, they're not, uh, uh, the big money are not technically driven. They understand the fundamentals. So, and then they, you know, uh, basically enter trades technically to see where they are, right? So that's where we are with the dollar index. And um, moving on to the, uh, the the Japanese dollar, dollar yen. And if we're seeing some dollar strength, then again, it's really understanding where the pullbacks are potentially looking at demand zones. If you want to get long, here's a new demand zone for the uh, 
for the dollar yen and again we just saw that the market is pricing in potential growth for the uh, for the US dollar and um, and the Japanese yen being uh, you know not basically they're, they're, they're pricing and I guess uh, more weakness so again divergences in central bank policy any pullbacks will be really nice uh, into that zone there for a nice buy again looking at any kind of sell trades fundamentally if you want to um, potentially take advantage of any kind of um, risk sentiment plays so for example risk off could come into the market then what you probably want to do is look towards uh, any of these supply zones but also um, look for major areas of support and resistance so you're probably looking at that zone right there let me just put that in uh, I'll put that in nice gold color um, so that's probably the, the top area so it's, it's the, the, the 10669 to 10799 area um, is probably the area where you're looking for some uh, confluence within that wide supply zone right there um, that'd be the area but I doubt that was going to maybe hold um, if again the money is flowing into the dollar again moving on to the dollar swiss and again we're just seeing dollar movement really kind of push higher um, i had actually got into this trade and took profit um, just as it hit the highs here i'm looking for more um, upside so if prices do decide to go higher you know then I'm looking for a pullback into a demand zone and then looking for any kind of long trades from a uh, again a short trade perspective because again anything can happen in the short term um, you know if you do want to get short then there's an opportunity now to get short or anywhere within this area again I'd probably say the highs of that supply zone because you've got some decent uh, resistance within that area as well your daily resistance 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 bit of support there resistance 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 that's definitely going to be an area where traders technical traders will look towards um, uh, you know some sort of trading activity maybe taking profit etc but the really the path of least resistance is in my opinion to the upside this is not financial advice of course this is just understanding where I think money is going to flow um, uh, based on my uh, fundamental risk sentiment analysis. I'm going to clean up the chart a little bit, uh, delete these, no need for this really at the moment. So those are the areas that you want to probably look towards if you're looking at any kind of uh, buy or sell trades. Moving on to the dollar CAD, the dollar CAD again, the dollar strength coming into the market. Um, there wasn't a bit of demand until the shift this week. The bond market really um, uh, pricing in some um, a uh, um, better than expected, I guess, growth for the US economy. So, just move this down here. Um, basically, again, you're just seeing a shift, right? A shift in sentiment. So, again, any kind of pullbacks into that area there. That would be a really nice uh, buy trade and the, the guys that are in the private discord group will also know this to be actually quite a deep stop hunt as well as a CPR zone this was a nice capture pain relief so if we do get prices pull back into this one uh, 1 1.2589 uh, level that's going to be a really nice zone to look for any kind of buy trades um, also as well the commodities are selling off um, a little bit they're pulling back and this is really due to again dollar strength so um, let's see what happens but if you do want to get short you know now is actually a quite a nice uh, time to, to potentially get short technically um, and also as well I'd probably say my preference to get short on this would be at around the you know one two nine a nice fresh area of supply there and even at the 130 zone if prices can get up there um, and you want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar that is actually quite a decent zone to look for any kind of uh, short trades again depending on how the uh, the dollar does and whether the rumor does have any kind of uh, legs to it moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar and um, the New Zealand dollar is quite a uh, potentially a strong currency um, again we did read that 
you know, traders, I think was the uh, article, I think the article was right here, nope, it wasn't there, it was here talking about New Zealand looks ahead of the pack when it comes to um, central banks, uh, the futures market pricing in a, um, up, uh, a rate hike, you know, basically for late 2022. So with that being said, if you are probably gonna buy the uh, uh, any currency against the dollar, it might wanna be the New Zealand dollar, even though there is some strong sentiment coming out against, you know, um, well, for the uh, for the US dollar. So if you do wanna be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar, um, then that is gonna be the area to look for any kind of buy trades. Secondly, would be anywhere within the uh, lower end of this demand zone where you've got some, again, some decent support and resistance, horizontal support and resistance as, you know, some confluences. But again, I think with the sentiment of uh, selling dollars, um, again, anything can happen. And this is, again, this is not financial advice. So if you do want to sell dollars and buy the New Zealand dollar, then that is really the, the those are the two, two zones to really look for that type of trade um, and I do think that there probably is going to be some um, some dollar weakness but I think now sentiment really is um, with the dollar and I think this now becomes if anything this does become a nice decent short if prices do come back up to these you know 73 74 areas if you're looking to buy the US dollar so let's see what happens with that currency pair Moving on to the British pound, US dollar, and the British pound has really been on an absolute tear, um, you know, over the past, uh, since the beginning of the year especially, but way back into into May when you think about um, the uh, reflation trade and how prices have gone higher in the dollar, you know, if you go back to the Dow Jones dollar index, you'll see how um, the dollar has been weak, but I think now the tide is turning slightly, um, and, the, and uh, fundamentally, the, uh, the Bank of England um, and uh, rate hike bets are actually picking up, uh, leaving options trading traders wanted more and unimaginable just six months ago, investors are piling in to bets that will pay out if the Bank of England uh, raises interest rates for the first time since 2018. So you've got some really big money, smart money options traders looking at uh, potential rate hikes. Um, and also as well, you've got UK money markets are no longer wagering on um, Bank of England rate cuts. So market money markets are no longer betting on a Bank of England rate, uh, rate interest rate cut as a surge in bond yields worldwide sharpens investors' focus for a global economic recovery. So um, the, the pound really did benefit and was benefiting from the vaccine rollout. The vaccine rollout is just basically um, the fact that the country was really ahead in deploying and vaccinating you know, the population, which should lead to normality within the economy and then therefore they're ahead or should be ahead the, the idea goes that um uh, for, for the economy right because you know people can get back to jobs and doing what they want to do rather than staying away staying home because of the virus spreading now whether you believe that is true or not um i guess it doesn't really matter it just matters that the whether the what the market thinks and if that's what the market theme was and you can see it really play out that's basically the trade and that's you know the uk are ahead when it comes to vaccinating their population when it comes to uh when in comparison to the us dollar and the um and the U and europe so um this is why you've seen this uh, this trend here the market pricing in the better than expected growth um, from a GDP perspective. But now we have the power, sorry, the US dollar now looking to actually grow. Now the market has to reprice the exchange rate and the value of the British pound against the dollar. So what you might see is, you know, maybe a bit of a deeper pullback before looking at getting long here or long here if you want to buy the dollar. For me, I think the, um, I think the, uh, a dollar trade, if prices can come up to these areas here, I think that's actually gonna be a decent trade to the downside. Um, I do like that. But again, two probably strong currencies competing with each other. So we should now enter into a ranging market. When you have a weak currency versus a strong currency, or when I say a, a strong currency, when uh, the sentiment um, is for to buy the uh, the, the the pound and sell the dollar this is what you get 
and they're not doing that again because of any technical reasons it was this is all fundamentally driven so uh, those are the areas that you're looking for for buys and sells moving on to the uh, euro dollar and euro dollar i managed to get in short up here right at the top and uh, if you watch uh, last week's um, uh, analysis i was saying i was actually quite short on the, or i say short on the euro um, and buying the dollar um, managed to get a, a couple of trades in here made made a bit of a you know two to one on this trade here um, and uh, also as well within this pullback here as well so over the past couple of weeks the euro dollar has been decent for me and now I've got into you know that's this trade around here and uh, really nice to downside so far looking to hold this now while sentiment is actually with this trade so um, we've, we've, uh, going on to Europe so we've got a strong uh, uh, Europe also I say strong dollar uh, sentiment but again the divergence between um, the dollar and uh, the euro is actually apparent because treasury yield or treasury pain is starting to hurt Europe so four ECB members have recently said they're monitoring rising bond yields uh, those words are not enough so the reflation trade which is what um, the theme is now reflation uh, economic growth the reflation trade that's driven the 10-year treasury yield to their highest level in a year is causing real pain in European bond markets with the risk that higher borrowing costs will hinder efforts to rehabilitate the pandemic-stricken economy. Verbal intervention by the European Central Bank has thus far proven ineffective in capping levels. More explicit action may be required. And what do they mean by more explicit action? Basically, uh, body yield curve control, more quantitative easing, more bond buying um, to keep the, uh, the borrowing costs down so that is more uh, money printing devaluation of a uh, of the currency so the europe you know european union in the eurozone is lagging behind uh, the uk and um and uh, the us at the moment so this now starts to look like a really good trade at least in the uh, in the short term uh, i've probably got my targets somewhere around these lows around this 1950 120 level i think there was um there was an article i haven't got it to hand but i think it was uh, deutsche bank was talking about the uh, dollar um euro dollar going down to actually 119 so there's a target right there um from a from a major bank and uh, looks like that may start to play out anyways if you do want to get long on the euro for whatever reason the technical reason then um, here is a demand zone price is in that demand zone so you may want to look for any kind of uh, buy trades within that zone now I'd probably say if i was looking at this from a technical analysis perspective i would probably say that would be the area as we've got some support support and a bit of support here so where we are now around this one two zero six to maybe the half number five would be uh, a decent technical buy but again there's no technical level that will stand in the way of value and fundamental and risk sentiment so um you know pick your poison basically um if you are looking for a potential uh, sell trade I think a move back up into this supply zone right here is where you're looking for and then looking for any kind of short trades or if you're looking for you're just basically looking for lower highs and lower lows so prices to make a lower high then a lower low then a pullback into that zone before looking at getting short moving on to the euro yen and euro yen there was a bit of a supply zone here i did mark it out but it was a weak one very weak one i wasn't expecting it to hold and uh, you can pretty much see what happened now the euro yen um again two pretty weak currencies not fundamentally not as clear even though you're seeing the euro is appreciating against the the uh, the japanese yen um this is actually a decent zone here i think i do think technically i do like it but I just don't like trading. I probably won't end up trading this pair. Um, it's not a pair on my watch list anyway. So um, looking at that zone there, really nice technically, but 
I'm not really driven by the technicals. So if you do want to be a buyer of the euro against the yen, decent area. If you do want to get uh, by the yen against the euro, then really there's a supply zone here, but it's not fully formed. You really want supply to prove um, that there is um, strong supply there, and that would only really happen if you start to see prices, you know, um, fall away from that, and then you're looking for a pullback into that zone, and then looking for any kind of short trades in and around the highs. Uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar, and again Aussie dollar, the Australian dollar, I think overall is a buy, um, maybe not against the US dollar at the moment, but um, against other currencies, um, I think the Australian dollar is uh, one of the strongest, um, but from you know the the uh, Aussie dollar, I do think that um, the Australian dollar is probably a buy, maybe a bit deeper somewhere around these areas here within this uh, zero point uh, seven six cent level to probably the lows of zero point seven four. But again, this is not a pair that I would really be interested in uh, fundamentally because you really want to look for divergences where you see a weak currency versus a strong currency. If two currencies are you know, picking up in strength, it's harder to actually know where you know the, the, the value is because that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for a bargain hunters. So if both currencies are looking at uh, you know strengthening and appreciating, unless there's some sort of monetary policy divergence, um, um, then you know, or maybe risk sentiment divergence, then it's very difficult fundamentally to really want to uh, look to buy or sell on a particular currency, even no matter how nice certain levels look. Um, I just won't look for any of those uh, currency pairs. So I do think that this area here is actually quite decent for a buy. So this um, where you've got the demand zone, but you've also got a nice uh, res uh, resistance and support zone. So this 0 0.7, probably 76 round number, and just beyond that to the uh, 75 uh, five level is decent right now. Could you take a trade here? Possibly, if you get, you know, obviously a lower time frame entry, that could be decent. But again, standing in the way of positive dollar sentiment uh, is is really at your peril. I would say not necessarily the smartest move uh, at the moment. Um, moving on to the um, to the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, and we're seeing a repricing now. This I actually like to alongside now. We are in a demand zone here. I do like a potential buy here if that doesn't work out. In fact, I think this area here is actually really nice. Um, as we've got some, you know, some decent confluence in there with horizontal support um, and resistance there. So um, I do think that is really nice uh, for a potential buy if this doesn't work out. This uh, this buy for the Australian dollar doesn't work out. The Australian dollar has been in a a massive uh, uh, trend again risk on risk has been on yeah so in a risk on environment commodity currencies do well and that's why you're seeing this uh, take place so for me I think this trend should still be intact so I'm looking at um, potentially buying again this is not financial advice for you this is just telling you what I'm doing and the reasons why but if risk does you know come back off and there is worries about the economic recovery then this uh, supply zone is going to be quite a nice sort of decent supply zone for, to look for any kind of uh, short trades and finally looking at gold and now gold has really taken a bit of a dip there was um, a, uh, a nice demand zone right here which in the short term did look like it was uh, looking at going higher, but now we've seen again a massive shift in um, in in dollar strength. So uh, you're seeing gold start to uh, uh, diminish in price, and this is really due to money shifting, potentially shifting back into uh, bonds, into into newer bonds and higher priced bonds. So um, because bonds. Pay a yield, right? So, um, two safe haven assets are 
you know, gold and silver and precious metals and bonds. And if uh, the money that was in, you know, in, in bonds or in gold, matter of fact, is coming out of gold and maybe back into government treasury bonds because yields, 10 year yields are going higher, for example, when they're paying a better return, then um, you're probably going to see a shift in that. But if we zoom out, um, which is always advisable, if that's the absolute bargain zone which is back in 2020 March and this is an expensive area yeah for gold then we are just really around fair value between a, a bargain area and an expensive area 50% is fair value it's, it's not some magical Fibonacci uh, um, uh, level and anything below fair value is what cheap right so Gold, still probably more bullish on gold in the medium to long term, but from a short term perspective, um, you probably may see some downside in gold. I do think though, gold is still a, um, a buy, again, medium to long term. And if you start to see inflation go above 2%, I was saying this to uh, guys in the private gr uh, Discord group fundamentally, I think inflation if there are worries about an overshoot in inflation, then gold should catch a bit again, um, in a sense that inflation is devaluation. So the higher inflation is, the more a currency is devalued. So, um, you know, traders want to hedge against inflation by buying gold. So uh, let's see what happens with that. I think gold uh, is, um, again, still medium to long term, Buy, but short-term sentiment around the dollar strengthening, uh, you know, bonds now uh, paying a decent, a potential decent yield based off of uh, you know economic growth and government debt. I think now that the uh, gold may want to be a bit. I wouldn't say necessarily short it, but uh, again, you can do what you want. But for me, my options are still potentially looking at buy trades um, in the short term, but not expecting massive moves in gold now to the upside. I think gold may want to probably settle somewhere in a bit of a range and then just take advantage of that range. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Um, if, uh, what's it, if, but uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and um, if you found the content useful and I will speak to you again um, until the next video I wish you a great trading week